In The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit books, author J.R.R. Tolkien created a world unlike our own, where our world only has one human bipedal species walking around. He saw a multitude of different species, humans, elves, dwarves, hobbits, trolls, and in fact too many to mention. The last 20 years or so of fossil and genetic evidence shows us that human ancestors had a much more interesting past than we could have ever imagined. Because we often see ourselves as a dominant species, the story has always gone that we destroyed and eradicated any competition, and this left us in this sterile environment. The recently discovered fossils of Homo floresiensis, Homo luzonensis, and Homo naledi coupled with the genetic evidence of the Denisovans, shows us that our past was much more like Lord of the Rings than present times. And when you throw in the previously known Neanderthals and Homo erectus, one begins to wonder what our Homo sapien ancestors thought of these other species as they inevitably encountered them. Did our human ancestors revere Neanderthal, Homo erectus, or the Denisovans? Did they pass down stories of their encounters with these other species? And if they did, is it possible that any trace of these encounters survive into recent or near recent oral histories? On the eastern Indonesian island of Flores live a people known as the Naji. The Naji tell a story about a creature known as the Ibu Gogo. They describe it as a bipedal walker that's capable of running quite fast. The story goes that this creature is about five feet tall, hairy, and murmurs in what is presumably its own language. In the Naji language, Ibu means grandparent and Gogo means one who eats anything. At one point in his book, Kalahari, Danish author Jens Bier recounts time spent with the Australian Aborigines in the Australian bushland. These Australians tell Jens that the Milky Way is the smoke from the fires lit by the quote old people of another race who lived before them. In the same passage he relates a story that the Naran Bushmen of the Central Kalahari tell him. They believe a young girl from an earlier race created the Milky Way by throwing hot ashes into the sky. As one man described, a man of the old race sat by his fire, took off his wet sandals, and asked his daughter to dry them. The daughter laid the sandals too near the fire. The old man saw that one of them was completely burned to ashes, and the other was half burned. The girl took the half burned sandal and flung it up into the air, where its glowing ashes became the stars and the Milky Way. Now, my interest here isn't necessarily in the stories that are being told, but the fact that all these stories are obviously referring to a different species. Although Jens Bier uses the word race, throughout the book he uses that word interchangeably with species. Both the Australian Aborigines and the Kalahari Bushmen make it a point to declare the characters of their stories are a different type of human than they are. Jens Bier himself observed, quote, Both people appear to accept that the earth was inhabited by an earlier race before the present human race was created. It should also be pointed out that in all three of these stories, not only are the people referring to a different species, but they're referring to an older species. For example, the Naji people refer to these hobbit-like creatures as grandparents, while the Australians refer to their characters as old people, and the Neuron Bushmen refer to, quote, a man of the old race. But is it possible that these stories are more than just myth or folk tales and are actually cultural memories of our encounters with extinct human species? How far into the future can oral histories passed from generation to generation retain accurate information? This is a question we'll likely never be able to answer. And as a result, this episode will likely leave everyone with more questions than answers. But this subject is fascinating nonetheless. One thing we can do is scrape together all the available evidence 
and see where that leaves us. The Naji Ibu Gogo story tells us that the Ibu Gogo was about five feet tall, hairy, and swift runners. The fossil evidence of Homo floresiensis tells us that this quote-unquote hobbit was about three foot three inches tall, but the hair distribution of its body is unknown, so we don't know if it was hairy or not. We do know that this species had curved toes, which according to evolutionary anthropologist Daniel Lieberman, running would have put high amounts of stress and torque on the toes as it ran. This indicates that Homo floresiensis was probably not a natural runner. While the physical evidence and the Naji Ibu Gogo story do not exactly line up, it's still possible that this story is based on a distant cultural memory of previous encounters with this ancient species. We know today that every time an individual accesses a memory, they alter this memory which over time can cause many details to change when compared to the actual event. So it wouldn't be surprising if some details in oral histories change over time, while others remain accurate. In Africa, the genetic and fossil evidence discovered over the last 20 years lends some plausibility to the Naran Bushman story. The story itself may be seen as a Milky Way creation story, but the fact that they nonchalantly attribute these events to an ancient human species is not unimaginable. For instance, in Africa, we know Homo erectus, or one of its derivatives, such as Homo heidelbergensis, overlapped in time with our species. In fact, a 2011 study by evolutionary biologist Michael Hammer and colleagues found that about 2% of the DNA of modern African populations was acquired from an archaic species that split from Homo sapiens an estimated 700,000 years ago. This date makes Homo heidelbergensis the prime candidate. And even more interesting, Hammer and colleagues estimate that this admixing event occurred only 35,000 years ago. In 2013, paleoanthropologist Lee Berger discovered a new species that would come to be known as Homo naledi. The remains of more than 15 individuals were discovered in a South African cave system. This species stood about 5 feet tall and existed at least between 236,000 years ago and 335,000 years ago. We'll probably never know if the young girl who threw ashes into the sky and created the Milky Way was a story that recorded a real and long ago encounter with Homo heidelbergensis individuals, but that they chose to emphasize that these individuals were both ancient and different is extremely fascinating to think about. Add to this that other hominid species did exist alongside them, and you really start to wonder if this was nothing more than coincidence, or if there is some element of truth in this story. While the Milky Way creation story of the Australian Aborigines is different from the Naran Bushman story, two elements are strikingly similar. In both these stories, the individuals belong to a population in the deep past. And both these populations are archaic or extremely different than the storytellers. Which ancient population could the Australians be referring to? The strongest evidence indicates that the ancestors of Australian Aborigines left Africa about 70,000 years ago. In order to reach Australia, they would have likely traveled across the modern-day Arabian Peninsula through the Middle East, across Southeast Asia, over the Indonesian island chain, and finally into Australia. This route means they had the potential to encounter a multitude of human species. For example, the last fossil evidence of Homo erectus comes from the Indonesian island of Java only 110,000 years ago. And we know that both the Denisophans and Neanderthals were roaming Eurasia throughout this time. And if we dig further, we'll see that Denisovans made it to much more exotic locations. But before we decide on a likely suspect, let's look at one more aboriginal myth. The Warora people of Western Australia tell of a great flood. They claim this flood was caused by ancestral figures known as the Wanjina, 
other aboriginal groups have their own myths that not only document this great flood but the ensuing isolation of the small islands surrounding australia such as kangaroo island south of australia and the tiwi islands north of australia like the indigenous stories we've already discussed these aboriginal myths are rich in human narrative but we have scientific evidence that these stories actually document a historical event. 22,000 years ago, the sea level was about 440 feet lower than it is today. Levels began to rise after this point, and this rise accelerated further about 12,000 years ago when Earth entered the interglacial period, which resulted in a warming global climate. Prior to this rise in sea level, Australia was part of a continent known as the Sahul Supercontinent. In this supercontinent, the shores of Australia were extended by a hundred miles or more. And the area between Australia and Papua New Guinea was completely uncovered by water, which provided habitat for the Aborigines. As sea levels rose over thousands of years, much of this land was covered in ocean, leaving behind only small islands around the coast of Australia. As scientists started documenting these myths, which themselves narrate how and why small islands came into being, or how and why vast stretches of land disappeared under the ocean, they realized that incredibly, these myths documented events that happened between 7 and 13,000 years ago. A fascinating 2020 research paper details how underwater archaeologists located two sites with human artifacts. Both sites are located off the northwest shore of Australia near Barrow Island. Radiocarbon dating of marine shells in the same layer as the artifacts puts one site at about 7,000 years ago and the other at 8,500 years ago. These discoveries appear to validate Aboriginal myths as oral histories that are able to capture major environmental events. In fact, some of their myths give aboriginal names to islands that no longer exist due to the continued rising ocean. This case study proves that some myths, maybe all myths, regardless of the particulars of the narrative, document significant historical events. A 2016 genetic study found that the ancestral population of the aborigines mixed and obtained genetic material from a Denisovan population about 44,000 years ago. This finding is interesting for several reasons. If the aboriginal myth is accurately depicting an ancient encounter with a different human species, the genetic data hints that the last non-homo sapiens encounter was likely with Denisovans. The aboriginal stories documenting the breakup of this Sahul supercontinent are at most 15,000 years old. Any stories retaining memories of ancient encounters with Denisovans were likely 30,000 years older, but they could be younger. A 2019 genetic analysis shows that a distinct Denisovan group encountered Papua New Guineans about 30,000 years ago. By 37,000 years ago, Papuans and Australians had already split both reproductively and culturally. Australia and Papua New Guinea didn't become geographically isolated until 14,500 years ago. But it shows us that at least a small population of Denisovans survived until about 30,000 years ago. And according to the author of this paper, quite possibly until about 14,500 years ago. So it's possible that Australian Aborigines encountered Denisovans between 30,000 and 14,500 years ago 
but the only concrete proof we have is the encounter 45,000 years ago before the Papua New Guinea and Australian populations had split and become isolated. In the end, the question becomes, can oral histories passed down from generation to generation retain accurate historical events that happened 14,000, 30,000, 40,000, or even 50,000 years ago? Do the hobbits of Naji mythology represent real and past encounters with Homo floresiensis? When the Neuron Bushmen recount the legend of the young girl, of another species, flinging embers into the air and creating the Milky Way, are they passing down a memory of contact with Homo heidelbergensis or Homo naledi? When Australian Aborigines speak of their tales, was it the fires of Java Homo erectus, Indonesian hobbits, or more likely Denisophens that created the fires that formed the Milky Way? Currently, it is impossible to answer any of these questions. This video is simply an exploration of possibilities based on currently available evidence. The continuing advancement in ancient DNA, proteomics, and paleoanthropological technology may one day allow us to answer this question. This is paleoanthropologist Lee Berger. He is the head researcher of the team that discovered and excavated the Homo naledi fossils in the Rising Star Cave system of South Africa. The collection began. We designed technology that had never been used before underground. White light laser scanners that were giving us real-time scans on computers like that down to resolutions of 0.3 of a millimeter as we were mapping underground with these scanners. It was amazing. At the very least, more data will allow us to determine whether these myths are more likely or less likely to preserve Pleistocene encounters. Or maybe we'll never know. Either way, pondering such possibilities is significant in its own right. Whether these indigenous stories record specific encounters from the past, Genetic and fossil evidence affirms that our ancestors encountered multiple extinct human species. Reflecting on these extraordinary experiences of our long ago ancestors and ancient cousins breathes new life into them, even for a moment, and reminds us that our world wasn't so different from that of Middle Earth. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.